there's a study I think that was in the Vancouver Sun like three years ago, two years ago that said anybody who says they actually like those really hoppy IPAs is lying. I'm uh, super, super optimistic about what might come out of 200 Street 2040. Do you think Willowbrook High Rises has a chance of going through? I don't believe any Sky Train dates. <laughs> it's, it's, it's. it's Welcome. This is live from Langley, BC, the number one podcast in Langley, where we talk to local residents and business owners about local events and businesses. Today, we have Michael Pratt, a returning fan favorite and a Langley council member. I'm your host, co-host, because today is the first episode where we have a new host. Um, and uh, I'm Dan, local Langley realtor and I'm Megan, owner of The Local Space. Yay. Woo. Insert applause. And uh, yeah, Michael, so I mean, this time around, we don't really need yeah. to go through the whole song and dance. Um, so we can get right into it. And I know there's a lot of topics, right, that we wanted to talk about. So how about we start with, what do you think? What are your predictions for 2024? And uh, yeah, the township, what, what do we have in store? That's a, that's a big question. Yeah. What don't we have in store? No. Uh, 2024 in the township is going to be, uh, pretty exciting, especially for those people who are, uh, usually caught up in traffic. We're finally doing something about 208 street. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. I've seen that. Yeah. I've seen that. It's been kind of sad because you drive past and you've seen all the sort of the bigger trees coming down, uh, which is never fun, especially when you're used to it. Like a lot of us are, it's been there for our entire lives. Uh, but it is something that we've heard for a long time now that people have wanted that road finished, widened ready to go. Uh, the exciting part for me is that, uh, we haven't seen a final design yet, but what I've been told is that we're going to actually have a, a truly completed section of 208 street from 72nd all the way up to about 76, sort of going north of 80th. And what that means is you have protected bike lanes, you have landscape medians and you have your two lanes either direction. So that one day when it, it merits it, we can get a bus lane in there. So it'll be actually finished. It won't just be paint all the way across. So, so it's only four blocks. Yeah. Oh. So for the first, bit. so <laughs> the challenge, by Costco. so Costco the challenge yet and start exactly. And the, the, so the challenge and the reason why 208 has taken so long to get to this point is, and I think we've talked about it last time is, um, the townships sort of built out our roads in pieces along the major ones, because we learned our lesson in Walnut Grove in the eighties, where we built out everything, no development happened. The township almost went bankrupt. And so they said, Hey, we're going to pump the brakes on that moving forward. And so the development only happened on the blocks that sorry, the roads are only built on the blocks of development happen. And that has meant that from between 72nd to 76th, it hasn't actually been finished yet. Mm. So that's the part we're actually spending the money to build right now. We have still some money to be able to finish it north all the way, hopefully the highway one, the overpass, and then 80th Avenue as well. That should be coming forward pretty soon. So that's a exciting thing for 2024. The ice rinks and the dry floors at the LEC are under construction right now. Uh, that was something that was uh, passed last year, finally under construction. That's where that uh, overflow parking kind of is, the corner of uh, 202 and yeah, 80th. Yeah, yeah, it's close there. It's sort of in between 200 and 202, uh, right next to the field house that's there. So that'll be a big one. Planning's still underway on the new community center pool and library in Willoughby. I know that one's a big one for a lot of people because thousands of people have moved into Willoughby with no community center and rightfully they've been asking where the heck is it? So that's still being planned. Where is that? Uh, without getting into too many specifics, I don't think I can just yet, uh, but it'll be very close to the Willoughby Town Center. Where I just got the food from. Mm -hmm. That is a segue and a half. <laughs> wow. Are we going to try that? You're almost, now you're, now we're almost <laughs> like you do this for a living. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll get into it. For sure. Uh, unless we're going to get into it now. I don't know. We were talking about this. We were trying, so, maybe trying I something different. One of the things, I don't know if it's really that good. If it's not warm, it might get soggy. Okay, so okay. Now. Well, so that's, maybe, that's a good point. So maybe, because well, I got like cauliflower bites. This I don't is know. why you're here, because otherwise it would have been some wet cauliflower bites so, that we would have had at the end. So I didn't realize that cauliflower was a brunch food. Is this, are we, is this publicly accepted? Because we got food from, I mean, have we dropped the name of where we've got the food from? Okay, yet? no, Hard Bean, yeah, brunch place. Hard Bean brunch. But they don't just have brunch. I got chicken wings. They're really? open like, yeah, they're open till nine. PM. Plug, Maybe plug, later. Plug. No, like no, I think they're even later because like New Year's they were open until midnight. That's right. Yeah. Because I know, I know talking to the owners, they were very excited and a lot of people in Willoughby were very excited because there hasn't really been something to do post 
like 8 p.m. In yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's exciting. It's pretty good. <laughs> I live in Willow. No, that'd be good. Oh, do you? Um, so, 80th yeah. and 208th. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so now, now I can see why you're upset that it's not going I don't actually take 208 ever. I've gotten used to not taking 208, <laughs> so I just avoid it at all costs. I That's usually fair. take 216th. Oh, you go all the way across. Yeah. Well, because don't say that the, out loud. It's People the fastest start to... way to get to downtown Langley where That's my true. store is. That's true. Uh, yeah. I'm sure 208th one day might be faster because it's more yeah. direct, but... Yeah. It'll it'll be it'll be pretty pretty good in the next two years. Yeah, especially um, now that there's a light on Glover. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, easy. that turn is a bit tough. But now yes. it's easy. It's a that turn is obnoxiously long. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, Willoughby's changing. And then another big thing for 2024 will be, uh, and I think we're going to probably get into this a little later, is the provincial legislation on the various yeah. housing policies that they brought out, and that will start to have a. Won't really have an impact for a couple of years, but it'll be finalized this year. So that's exciting. Mm, okay. In different ways. For yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's a big one. That's a big one on my end. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what you guys have planned. But uh, before that, let's have a taste of this hard bean brunch. So hard bean, if you didn't know, new to Willoughby Town Center, um, they uh, reached out to the podcast and I'm happy that we were able to make that connection uh, through some of our connections at, uh, you know, the governing bodies in Langley. <laughs> and because of that, we were able to make sure they got some attention yeah. uh, on the permitting and, uh, you know, That's they were fun. able to open. Not to say that it was solely because of the Langley podcast that they opened up, but, you know, um, <laughs> I'm glad that uh, we were able to help. Uh, Someone's but a little full of themselves. That was a joke. Though. <laughs> I'm, I, you said they reached out to you, right? So I talked to them. Maybe, maybe it's, a, it's a Langley influencer thing. So, mm-hmm. yeah, they thought, okay. Local space Langley influencer. Okay, so these are cauliflower, cauliflower bites. bites, and these are like they're chicken delicious. wings that they're made with waffles. Oh, nice waffle chicken wing, That's maple exciting. waffle chicken wings. I th- okay, so yeah, <laughs> the greatest invention uh, in the Canadian cuisine was uh, yeah, cauliflower, uh, oh, wow. buffalo cauliflower wings. So Those are delicious. Pretty good. Yeah, nice job, hard bite or hard bean, hard bite, hard bite. Um, Great chip company. Yeah, <laughs> also local. <laughs> they are, yeah. I put them in my uh, gift baskets. Um, so yeah, let's let's keep on rolling here. For sure. Um, how about before we get into mm-hmm. the housing, let's uh, address while your mouth is full. Address some of the <laughs> questions that you people were asking. Yeah. So uh, this is a new segment. Hit it's me called uh, recommendations from the gram. So <laughs> if you ever want your questions answered, make sure you tune in to social media where we're going to be asking you what questions you want asked to ask the uh, the guests, right? So Got it. Okay. Sponsored by the local space. Sounds like it's more sponsored by Camp Beer by looking at the questions. Oh, no. Uh, what was your favorite part about working at camp? What was my favorite part about working at camp? Okay. So I'll give... Oh, I was going to say, I'll give the, I'll give my professional answer, then I'll give my non-professional answer, but I won't do that. Um, just give your honest answer. The honest answer was, and this is going to sound corny, but just the people both I worked with and then that I ended up becoming friends with as customers. Mm-hmm. Um, never in a million years did I think I was going to work in the service industry. And then by sort of luck and chance and actually running for council the first time, was the reason I ended up working at camp, which is a funny little story I can share. But um, yeah, just the people you meet in that space, in that place are one of a kind, the best. Um, and it was really cool to be there from almost day one. I wasn't quite in the first crop of employees because they were like, who's this guy who's never served before and showing up to his interview in a suit to work at a brewery. <laughs> Shout out to Joanna. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that. I think she called me Yacht Club when I first uh, first started. But um, yeah, just Starting from day one, sort of seeing the growth and meeting people like yourself. <laughs> Once or twice. Camp, okay. camp, camp. Camp beer. Like regular. I was an everywhere regular. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's what I hear. She shares yeah. the love with uh, the local breweries, which yeah. we, we respect, because we do too. Who was your favorite person to work with? Who was my favorite person to work with? They're picking, making me pick sides here. Um, oh my goodness, that's tough. Yeah, an employee may have asked this question. An employee may have asked this question. <laughs> was it my boss by any chance? No, my former boss? It wasn't no. my former boss? Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't have a favorite because they're all so great. Very nice A, a true parent. Does the person who asked still work there? Yeah, Lucy. Okay. 
Oh, you're okay, not supposed to yeah. rat her yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Funny enough, I might be going there this this afternoon for a meeting. So if Lucy's working there, I'll uh, I'll tell her it was her. Yeah, and then she'll watch this and be like, "Hey, yeah." yeah. By the way, these wings taste like cinnamon toast crunch. Oh, really? Is that what it was? I haven't tried I it. I don't yet. know. Maybe I'm tripping out, but that tastes like cinnamon. <laughs> is, is that the sign of a stroke? Um, Cin- they are called waffle crusted wings. Where did tossed in spice maple bourbon syrup uh, side of hot sauce? Okay, well, definitely not cinnamon. Hey. You know what? Your palate. Cinnamon is, maple. I mean, it's close. Like cinnamon, a lot of the time. Oh, it's cinnamon maple. Okay. No, it's no, it's cinnamon not. Maple. I would say cinnamon maple, kind of the same thing. Like they go maple in the same. Maple bourbon. Well, maple, maple bourbon, bourbon from wings is yeah, it's kind of similar, I guess. You Anyways. you might not end up in the brewery industry because your sensory doesn't. Oh seem no, to I'm be, terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We found that out with Tim, and he's just like, "So what do you taste?" And I'm like, "Ah, tastes like uh, tastes like beer." And <laughs> he's like. I actually have no leg to stand on because my the saddest thing for me was when we changed from bar service to table service sort of around COVID because I could no longer stand next to the people who actually knew what they were talking about and just copy them. Be like, yeah, you're actually going to get a nice uh, wild yeast note off of this uh, pale ale here. It's gonna It was made with citra hops, so you're going to get a bit of a stone fruit finish and all that. Uh, and to me, it's like this has got notes of pale ale. Yeah. So Caribou. the fact that I lasted three years at that place and they didn't fire me. Were you was, a beer drinker before you started there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was the kid who in high school showed up to a party with like a thing like Fat Tug IPA. Whoa. Mostly because my, I think, no, my parents definitely didn't boot for me underage. But if they did, they, 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 they thought for some beer? reason, they're like, maybe if we give this guy something that tastes bad, he won't want it. Terrible. Try. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not dissing anybody. Yeah. But like, I'm not there yet. I had it the other day. There was a I'm not there yet. There was a study I think that was in the Vancouver Sun like three years ago, two years ago, that said anybody who says they actually like those really hoppy IPAs is lying. And they did a they, they did a study that actually observed people as they took a sip, and they could tell by somebody's sort of innate movements of their face whether or not they actually enjoyed it or not. It's and like a whiskey though. Like nobody actually likes the taste of whiskey. They're like. Oh, that burns good, you know? See, I insulted a few craft beer drinkers. You just insulted like an entire country there with Scotland. I mean, I didn't say it was Shrek's coming after you. Specific country. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like hoppy beer. I like dark beer and light beer, yeah. but I don't like hoppy beer. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Mm-hmm. I think that's a, a, a very fair point to, to mm-hmm. take on the craft beer scene. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone's learning. I mean, I'm learning. I know you guys you are seem like seasoned. You, yeah, you just seem like you bit. work out and do sports. I, and I, I drink beer. Are you a vodka sometime. seltzer kind of guy? I used to, yeah. <laughs> I drink vodka waters usually. No Although reason. Camp had a good seltzer. Yep. We did. Oh. Oh. What happened? No, no, it's oh. a it's a perfectly good seltzer. I like the little it goes with the slush. Yeah, the yeah, slushy yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah, going yeah. in it. Oh, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. try that. No, it is it is nice. It's really good if you don't want to actually fun. go out and have uh, fourteen pale ales. You just have mm-hmm. four of those. I also oh. just like their lager. They have a good mm. lager. They've got good everything. But so does every other brewery in Langley, because I love them all. I'm just not a sours person. That's fair. Camp's got I, a lot of sour. You know, I don't mind sour. Funny enough. You're such a girl. Yeah. What? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> After a few drinks, the sour tastes like grapefruit. It's pretty good. All right. Okay. Hey, the, heart not, wants the heart wants. I guess not. It's not like I drink vodka cranberries. Come on. Again, you're just going after some groups of people here. I I'm, used to, but I don't anymore. The, I swapped it with water. The vodka cram listeners and your okay. audience are now just furious. Moving on. Uh... No more questions from uh, the, the, the viewers? Someone wanted to know if the township is splitting the cost of a, a roof. Oh, oh, the roof. Oh, I'm assuming that is the, the roof. The stadium at LEC. Yeah. Uh, so I can say right now that there's no plans that I'm aware of uh, to build a roof. I know that it was a pretty expensive endeavor to get the stadium up in as quick a time frame as they did. That was sort of before my time on council. The stadium was just finished, I think, last summer. And so I was about four or five months into the job. But uh, yeah, right now I think it's uh, a matter of there's a bunch of other capital priorities across the township, a lot of sort of community-focused projects. And so uh, while it'd be great to have a fully enclosed stadium, it's uh, it's not exactly on the- Fully enclosed is that's, yeah. Well, yeah, when I say fully enclosed, it'd be nice to have a roof on all three sides. Right. But I, I don't know if it's in the cards right now. I know that uh, out in Halifax, the same, uh, the Halifax Wanderers playing the same league as Vancouver FC, their owner there is uh, proposing a pretty sizable stadium, pretty much complete overhaul. And they're uh, offering to contribute to it. 
Um, but uh, those discussions are ongoing. Those within the league, yeah. That's yeah. different, yeah. So that's more so to help, yeah, bring the community up. And the- yeah, I think it's awesome that we have so many pro teams here in Langley now. Uh, I think it really sort of, it makes Langley feel, again, more, more like a city unto itself, right? People don't always have to go into downtown. They don't have to go to another place to, to watch a game. We have soccer, basketball, hockey, various professional levels. And I think it's awesome that we can have more people come into Langley, stay in Langley. Uh, for me now, it's a, an adventure. Whenever I go downtown, it's like, oh man, I haven't seen this place in oh, yeah. millennia because I, I barely ever leave. Yeah, no, it's definitely a different experience now. You just, you feel like, you know, the city's gotten so much bigger yeah. or something, but same thing. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, so speaking of getting bigger, mm-hmm. uh, 200th Street is getting bigger, uh, getting wider, <laughs> yeah. very wide yeah. uh, with the 2040 plan. Yes. So- yeah, what tell us about that? We kind of touched on it a little bit last time. Yeah, I think but last, you guys have officially like ironed everything out now. Not quite. We but. so when we chatted last time, we had just kicked off the planning process for what we call in Two Hundred Street Twenty Forty. We've now gone through two rounds of public engagement. We have a third uh, sometime in the next couple months, and the idea was is basically asking the community at large, "What do you want out of the corridor along Two Hundred Street between Highway and?" roughly where the Home Depot is down on 68th because there's a lot of untapped potential along that corridor. That's where the new bus rapid transit line that was announced last year is going to be built along that corridor. And so there's a real potential, real opportunity there to create a place that Langley's never had before. Uh, Super vibrant, urban, walkable, almost downtown. Uh, a new downtown, right? And I know a lot of us who have grown up in Langley with Langley City, Langley Township, even myself, I often consider Langley City the downtown. But they're two different municipalities. And so I think it's appropriate that the township itself it sort of builds its own downtown, it builds its own hubs. And that for me is what 200 Street could really turn into. Uh, and so that plan that we've started and the engagement process has actually s- revealed some interesting things because, you know, Langley's always been that suburban municipality where people don't associate it with urban or walkable or anything like that. But a lot of the feedback we're getting from people through this process is they're saying we actually want the transit to be able to transform this area into a West Broadway, I think is what we kind of talked about last time, where you can go out at night, where you can work during the day, you can live down the road and you can have all these amenities and services and have a nightlife and really not have to leave if you don't want to, because we have the art sports and entertainment district at the LEC. You can go grab a game, take the bus down to Langley city, hop on a sky train. If you want by 2028, get downtown, get downtown Surrey. Like it's going to be pretty cool. And so the feedback we've gotten so far is really great. The engagement is especially in the first round, one of the most well-received planning processes we've actually ever launched Uh, a lot more feedback than I thought. I think we even thought we were going to see. So it's great. I'm uh, super, super optimistic about what might come out of 200 Street 2040. And that's going to look like pretty much like a mixed use residential, yeah. kind of like Hayer Town Center, Latimer Village right now. Yeah, it's 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 going to be whatever the community really makes of it. And what was really exciting about the last round of public engagement was um, the planning team behind the project brought out these big boards that showed the map of the area and they had these chips, which were park or bar or store and residential, right? And people were able to actually play around and put what they wanted where. Now, that doesn't mean that's exactly what's going to be in the plan. Um, unfortunately, never happens like that. But it gave us a good sense of what people actually want to see. People can buy into it a little bit better. And uh, it's going to be a lot of different uses. There's a lot of employment lands in the area. So there's going to be a lot of good jobs, which we know is very important to actually creating a vibrant place. Because this way, you'll have people walking around going to the shops, going to the different businesses during the day. And then when people come home from work, there's that sort of 24 hour cycle of activity, which is exactly what you need in a a downtown. So I'm excited. And the cool thing is too, and this is what I tell people a lot. The best part about the township is that we can have all these different types of neighborhoods that people want. If you want to be able to live in a more affordable downtown vibe, urban vibe, 200 street, 208 street, will sort of be your options. If you wanted a quieter, laid back neighborhood, Murrayville is beautiful. Brookswood is in that sort of world still. And then you can drive five minutes, 10 minutes down Fraser Highway and you're out in the country and you know you can pop down to a, a winery and cidery and farmer's market. 
right? And there's not a lot of cities around the world, or at least in North America, where you have that immediate access. And once we get real transit out here, it's going to be a, a game changer. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I agree. I see that happening. I don't know about you as a Willoughby resident, if uh, that's exciting for you or not, but. I plan on moving out of Langley. <laughs> <laughs> Great place to announce hey, You heard it here first. Uh, Langley's just getting too big, mm -hmm. busy for yeah, me. Yeah, but you told me, though, like, that's the future it's retirement like my five plan. five to ten year plan. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like, uh, you know, eventually you isn't get that to that. your plan too? I mean, down like five <laughs> to 10 years, a little bit further down, right? 10, 10 yeah. 20 year plan. Once, once you're like established, I feel like I still need the busyness a little bit, right. you know, yes. it's just building the career. Right. Yeah. Um, and you know, as it grows, you kind of start getting that taste of, okay, well there's a place to hide out mm -hmm. in the madness, right? Mm -hmm. If you places like Brookswood, right. I've been going to, uh, Brookswood brewing mm -hmm. in between showings because, I don't have to sit in traffic when I leave. I can just yeah. you know, get to the next destination. Yeah. So out here, yeah, when you're driving through 200th Street peak times, takes a little chunk out of your day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, speaking of Brookswood, right, mm -hmm. there's going to be all those amenities out that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we were speaking about something. I don't know if you can talk about it. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about it? The, uh, the Brookswood neighborhood plans? Yeah. Yeah. Because that was kind of, went through the first reading. Yep. Yeah, we actually, so we approved the three neighborhood plans last year after almost a decade of planning. And then the provincial government came out with a whole bunch of new housing legislation, which some people have very strong feelings about. Uh, I have sort of mixed emotions. And the biggest impact on Langley that these new policies have are on those neighborhoods where we actually haven't built anything yet. I don't, I don't foresee a lot of Langley's already existing single family homes getting torn down and put somebody putting a fourplex on it anytime soon. You talk to any builders, the math doesn't really work out. It will work out in Vancouver or Burnaby or Richmond where you have transit, smaller lots that are don't need older. Parking. You can sort of tear things down and, and build a, a pretty profitable product. But for Langley and Surrey is a good example as well, where we still have a lot of new subdivisions coming in. In the Brookswood neighborhood plans, for example, we had projected about 40 something thousand people at full build out in the new plants. A significant portion of the Brookswood plans were single family lots, new single family lots. And so now with the new provincial rules that are coming in, a builder or basically a developer who's just subdividing those lots could then, instead of build one home, build up to four units. Now, will every developer do that? Probably not, but that still throws our projections for schools, for services like sanitary water, drainage, throws them sort of out the window. And so we had to put a pause to figure out, okay, what are we going to do about this? And so actually yesterday at our last council meeting, we decided to amend or look at those areas of the Brookswood plans where the designations that we put in no longer jive with what the province is pursuing. So basically we're looking at the single family neighborhoods in Brookswood, and we're going to try and figure out by the end of the second quarter of this year, what those new plans are going to look like, because this way it gives certainty to investors, the builders, and quite frankly, the community who have been waiting for 12, if not longer, longer. years, right? Longer, yeah. um, to finally have a, a, a plan in place for this part of Brookswood. So it was frustrating for a little while there because we were sort of in limbo, but now we at least have a timeline of when we're going to know what the Brookswood plans are going to look like. I'm excited because I think it's an opportunity to make sure the plans are even better than they were before. The other thing with the provincial rules that I'm excited about, and they haven't necessarily brought this into the legislation yet, but I'm hopeful that moving forward, the provincial government could do this or the municipalities could do it. Um, one of the things I always talk about like on Reddit as well, if anybody's in the Langley subreddit. It's not the most active subreddit, but it's oh, my there. husband's obsessed with it. He always tells me things. It's, it, it's, hey, it's got its gems on there. And one of the things I, I sort of talk about sometimes there is you'll go into Vancouver, especially East Van, and you'll have those old grocery stores or commercial units in the sort of quieter single family neighborhoods. A lot of the times they've been renovated into cafes or cute little shops. And I'm like, man, wouldn't that be so nice to have a couple of those pop up in Willoughby or Brookswood? And I'm hopeful with this new provincial legislation where they're saying, well, we can have multiple units, smaller units on a single family lot. The next logical step for me is to say, well, you can build a tiny little commercial unit 
with a tiny little residential unit above, as long as it doesn't grow completely out of scale with the neighborhood, I don't see why we shouldn't be able to do that. And I think yeah, that, I've seen that. I think I've people seen that in uh, like Isn't Cloverdale, that, like Clayton. Yeah, there's those retail areas yeah. on the bottom, and then the houses. Yeah, they they call them live work townhomes, mm. and it's always funny because planning is a, a profession where you sort of put names on things that don't necessarily need names. You're like, that's just a, it's just a house with a shop in it. Live work. Live work. Live it's amazing work. though, sometimes the kind of businesses that pop up there. You're, yeah. Little mom and pop, like yeah. hairstylists, yeah. like, um, or like flower shops there. Yeah. Little, little like trinket stores. Yeah. 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 So it'd be cool to see that there. So what you're saying though, in Brookswood, mm-hmm. cause I want to kind of put it into, you know, my perspective is there going to be smaller lots allowed or you're thinking more higher density on like the existing, like, what was it? Like 4,000 square foot. That was the new plans were. Some of the, well, a lot of the single family lots were up to 7,000 yeah, square yeah. feet. They were big lots. And so I'm not sure what the process is going to end in. Okay. Um, I don't want to presuppose what the staff come back to. Uh, I have a feeling what we're going to want is certainty and we'll have certainty on the population projection if we see, say, uh, like row houses or something like that, right? What I what I anticipate That's is a good probably something, like if we wanted 40,000 people, how do we get to 40,000 people still just with a different plan? Uh, so this way we still have the same sort of calculations for schools that we'll need, what the impact on the hospital is going to be, et cetera, right? So uh, I'm hopeful that uh, the changes aren't, super drastic because then we won't have to go start from square one all over again. Uh, but planning is an, an iterative thing. It's never right the first time. And it's uh, one of those things where you're never going to make everybody happy. Yeah, totally. Do you think all these provincial changes are going to be a good thing? I think there was something had to change. We, we, we've been talking about the housing crisis for so many years now. And it always seemed to me that we were sort of tackling the problem sort of from the the edge and we were like just doing little things here, little things there. I think the unfortunate part with the provincial legislation from a Langley perspective is how different we are from cities like Vancouver or Victoria or Burnaby, where unfortunately in Vancouver, the city of, you have the vast majority of that city, single family homes, which you don't need a permit to turn into a bigger single family home. So a lot of these places, West End, not West End, the West side in kits are being torn down and turned into $4 million homes instead of $2 million homes. And this provincial legislation will finally take away the ability to prevent somebody from saying, well, I want to put in a duplex or a triplex, or I want to put in a suite. And I think that's what's going to be really great for Langley is the ability for people now to take their bigger lot and say they have a kid or kids that they want to try and help get into the market. Well, now they'll be able to build a suite a lot easier. So I think that part of it's, uh, you know, uh, a bit ambivalent in, in if it's a good or a bad thing. The one that I'm excited about the most is probably the transit oriented development one, because now we're not going to see neighborhoods along SkyTrain stations like we see in some other jurisdictions where you've got a station and just single family homes for acres upon acres upon acres. That should be higher density housing where people can live one car, fewer cars, whatever it is. So I'm excited about that because now again, it uh, sort of provides that flexibility. I think the reality is there will be some adjustments to these policies over time, uh, but something had to give. And now we're at least talking about how to fix these policies as opposed to just endlessly talking about what can we try? What can we do? So Does Langley have an issue with short-term rentals? I haven't heard it on my radar come up a lot. I know that they exist like they do everywhere. There hasn't been too much of a conversation besides making sure that the suites that they operate in are legal. Um, there's been, I think a conversation earlier on in the term about, is it an issue? And I think we're still waiting on a report back from that. Um, but the challenge for the township and the city of Langley as well is we're, we're getting limited on hotel space. And that's a big, big issue. You hear it from Tourism Langley all the time. And a lot of our, quite frankly, restaurant operators, a lot of our small businesses, because especially come tournament time at the LEC or Thunderbird Show Park, our hotels are full. And we're getting to the point where it's not just a seasonal thing, it's a year-round thing. And so, of course, if the hotels are full and we don't have enough, 
short-term rentals are going to pop up more and more and more if there's a demand. So uh, I think- They're going to be like a change for zoning around like that area of like North Willoughby towards the highway. I've already heard there's a new hotel going right close to that exit. There's a, there's a hotel approved last term uh, right south of the interchange on the southwest side. It's that site. Everybody probably can recognize it. It was cleared a long time ago and it's kind of just sat as a gravel patch for a number of years now. Um, that hasn't moved anywhere yet for various reasons. Uh, some of them are out of townships control, some of them out of the developers control. Uh, and so there is a hotel planned there. Uh, there are conversations around, well, at the townships own Langley event center space where we have all these parking lots. What can we do there? Right. And I think at some point we're going to go through a big master planning process, hopefully publicly, uh, about what we can do at the LEC because that's a very cool opportunity mm-hmm. to maybe get, yeah, some, some nice hotel space. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, it's yeah. Walking distance for events and everything like that. Yeah. Speaking of master plans, um, hot, segue, segue, hot topic, segue. Hot topic yeah. was, um, you know, on the, in the TikTok sphere, oh, yeah. uh, was, uh, Willowbrook high rises yeah. and people were going nuts and people were, you know, showing their concerns. Um, I, you know, have some insight that, it might not even be possible just in terms of, you know, height restrictions, Mm -hmm. but, uh, let's hear your take on it. What do you think? Like, you think Willowbrook high rises, there's five, there's supposed to, they were proposed 44 stories. Uh, do you think that's has a chance of going through? Well, we don't have a plan for Willowbrook yet. And so before anything gets built of any kind of real size in Willowbrook, we've got to have a plan first. And the, One of the biggest challenges for me in Willowbrook is you've got a very suburban sort of car focused street grid. You don't, well, grid is generous. You don't have a grid there at all. And so if you're all of a sudden going to start to plop down thousands of units, which until a sky trains in and real transits in is going to result in thousands of cars, it's going to be a nightmare down there. There's already traffic there. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's not going to, it's not going to end well for anybody. So First things first, we need to have a plan in place. The second thing, which is going to be interesting to see, is the scale. And I was actually surprised to see f- those 40-something story towers come in because what I've always been told is that part of Langley, since it's on the uh, pretty sedimenty floodplain, wouldn't support buildings over a certain height. But I guess if they can do it in Richmond, they can do it here. Yeah, um, that's true. Richmond, I mean, it's that's like... <laughs> It's a Florida it, of uh, yeah, it's, Vancouver. Yeah, it's soup over there. Yeah. Um, and so, so, so is Delta, but Delta's, Delta's doing great things. Mm-hmm. Um, so with, with the high rises in Willowbrook, I personally wouldn't support anything before the plan's done, before we had a chance to go to the public and say, hey, what's going on here? Um, for towers that size, it's going to take years to build anyways once they got approved. Even if they got to council tomorrow, probably be three or four years. The reality is if the SkyTrain's going down there and we're building a multi-billion dollar public transportation asset, that's where you put high density. You know, you've got malls there, you've got strip malls, you've got areas where redevelopment's possible and you can put the density there. But like I said, you need the grid there first. The other challenge is going to be we have an airport and the airport has regulations like every airport does around how high things around it can be built. So... Part of Willowbrook, I know, is within the airport's sort of zoning. I think they call it the AZR, the airport zoning regulation area. And that is also going to be something that we'll have to take time to fix because I I personally love the airport. I kind of grew up in Maryville and it it wasn't really a summer night unless you heard uh, the buzz of one of the Cessnas overhead, right? And there's a lot of very good jobs at the airport. Our Langley Regional Airport is one of the, strangely, one of the like, helicopter centers of North America. It's a very high tech spot. And so I think it's a tremendous asset for the township to have, but we've just got to figure out how it's going to interact with our long-term planning process. Yeah. I mean, I've heard stories about the airport, um, stuff that probably not to be talked about. Here, yeah. <laughs> uh, so... I just That's, like dropping things like that. Yeah. Just little tidbits to keep people on their edge like, of their seats. Yeah. Like, what's going on with the airport? Um, yeah, yeah. But well, we that have being said, a lot of conversations there, about there's some stuff. There's like that doesn't mean that you can't put high rises. What I think, obviously, I have no say here. But I think to avoid, you know, butting heads with the airport and you know the height restrict or um, you know the ground mm-hmm. problems. 
you know, 20, 20 stories in that area isn't something, you know, that wouldn't be unreasonable, right? Because that is pretty much the limit um, in terms of what can be built. And they're talking about this near the uh, near Cascades, like the, the that last station, um, which I want to know where that is, by the way. I don't know if you have full uh, details on the location, the last oh, Skytrain. Yeah, yeah. But speaking of that area, you know, you're looking at some buildings in there that are looked at by developers who are planning on, you know, building 20, 20 story mm-hmm. high rises there. Your neighbors. Low rises. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to get flooded with, uh, you know, people coming through. That'll be nice. Langley city needs that. That'd be awesome. But, uh, yeah, I think they're looking at like a max of between 16 to 20 mm-hmm. a story units in that area. And I think Willowbrook would be reasonable to do the same thing. Right. But again, I'm, I'm nobody. I'm just a podcast <laughs> guy, you know? Yeah. And the, the public engagement process will give us a good sense of where people mind, where people's minds are at. Um, the Langley Meadows neighborhood of single family homes just north of Camp Beer and the Willowbrook Mall. It was one of the first neighborhoods I actually door knocked during the last campaign and really mixed signals uh, from people there. Some people say, why would you ever touch this kind of neighborhood? Why we don't want towers nearby. Other people say, well, it sort of makes sense that station is going to be within walking distance. So again, it's uh, planning is difficult because so many people want so many different things, but we've just got to start the process. And I think that'll, that'll start relatively soon because we're still uh, anticipating, uh, the SkyTrain being operational by the end of 2028. And I say anticipating because I don't believe any SkyTrain dates. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a challenge. 2025 one. first at 2026, I think. If when it was, when it was oh, supposed to be. Let's talk about when it first started being talked about. Yeah, yeah, 1986. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, well. Yeah, no, I think when, when it was LRT uh, originally before 2018. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we'd almost be riding it by now. But then there was so a change. They had to dig all the businesses up on each side of the road on their original plan. Because they had to widen the road. I remember that. I was like, yeah, well, stupid. if you're LRT, like, it doesn't solve the problem. No. Especially if they Especially were talking about traffic. using that. Using that for traffic. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, you're just sitting on a track, on a track. I might, I might, I might, uh, I, get, I might get roasted in the comments for being an LRT uh, fan. It would be faster, but like, like to get it done, but. Mm. Well, it's funny because Calgary is a good example of where LRT actually works. And there's always the examples of people saying, well, you know, it gets stuck in traffic behind it. Oh, like yeah, it's, there's valid concerns. It can be annoying, but I, I just saw a stat today and I can't remember the figures or something, but Calgary's LRT is a huge success story and it's a pretty suburban city. Like, the planning in Calgary is totally different though. It's, it's it, from, from square one, I think mm-hmm. it was planned like in a way that it made sense, right? You're looking at that, that, that street that goes around all of Calgary and, you know, everything's subdivided into the different portions. I just know this from looking at a map because I have never been there, but <laughs> uh, I went there once. I went to obviously Stampede, but uh, of course I don't, I don't remember. Took the LRT to the Stampede downs and took it off. Yeah, yeah. That's the only time I've been on. I mean, so I have some experience, but uh, no, yeah. I, I, I hear just from seeing people yeah. online, right? I'm the voice of the people on TikTok. Sure. They're always like, oh, it's so slow. But I mean, it's better than having to take a bus. Do they know how often the SkyTrain breaks down? So, and this again, I might get roasted for this one too, but, and I'm saying this as a pretty regular user of, regular user of Metro Vancouver's transit system. If you live near the SkyTrain or in an area where you have frequent bus service, the stats show that we have actually one of the best transit systems in North America by far. We had the best, I think one of the best transit ridership recoveries post COVID. It's one of the most reliable, notwithstanding the last like 72 hours where we've had multiple incidents on the uh, SkyTrain. Now those aren't, those aren't mechanical. Those are unfortunately personnel related and and it's not a a fun situation, but for the most part, our transit system works. And again, that's probably not a a very popular opinion out in Langley. And it's a correct opinion for Langley because our transit system is not very good out here. It is not very reliable. Busing here today, if I hadn't caught the bus that I got, I've been waiting 20 minutes for the next one. And that is not a good system. So it's coming. The improvements are coming. It'll just take time. I agree. I agree. Unfortunately. I, I, I definitely see the efficiency of uh, transit if you have access to it. Because if you think about it, where we are right now, right, you, you'd you be waiting quite a while to yep. get down to, you know, SkyTrain yep. or you're almost better off going to Carvolf, taking that yep. to go down to, you That's know, how Brighton. my husband goes to work is he yeah. catches Carvolf. Yeah. And then goes downtown. Double-decker bus to Lowheed Central. 
It's great he was time. also on that bus last year when it snowed and he was stuck on the port man for seven hours. Was, that, was he there that night? Yeah. That's tough. That's tough. <laughs> I mean, that's something that you can't really I, control. I don't want to trivialize anybody's bad experiences with transit. They're valid. <laughs> we all have them. I think that has more just to do with like... Not having snow tires. No. <laughs> not even the snow. Like, it's that there's here, you know, it turns to ice immediately. So you can't even blame those people. I'm sure, you know, somebody with skills driving would also have problems and i'm not talking about myself i'm just saying in general <laughs> i know a guy uh, yeah what's the what's the reddit uh way of asking someone i know or yeah yeah am i the no i can't say that word on a podcast probably asking for a friend yeah, yeah, yeah see every good podcast needs the person in the background he's uh he's he's dialed in with the with the yeah jumping in here it's i love it you gotta laugh loudly at some point yeah <laughs> oh there you go <laughs> now we're talking for future reference, let's add that. Let's add that. Well, obviously now you have to be here every time. Though. Well, we can pretend there's like a screen Is he behind not here him every time? And, and be like, yeah, can you just pull up that uh, the, yeah. the shot real quick of the, yeah, the double-decker break, breaking <laughs> down? <laughs> Let, let's, let's laugh at these yeah, people yeah. who are, hey, well, you put it up here, right? Uh, let's laugh at those people who are getting stuck on the poor man bridge uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, Mr. Local Space. He has a real job. <laughs> <laughs> He's not known as Mr. Local Space, husband. No, he doesn't like to be on social media. Yeah, I know. Although but one he, time he brought my dog to PetSmart and someone walked up to him and asked him if that was Bubba. So people oh my recognized God, that's my hilarious. dog. Wow. <laughs> Langley influencers. My dog's just cute and he's really old. The uh, famous dogs. See, that's the that's the weird part about being like a, I, I would say, so Zed's the last letter in the alphabet. Y is the second last letter. I, that's the thing about being a Y-list celebrity in the town you grew up in is that occasional time somebody recognizes you somewhere and you don't know if it's a good or a bad thing. Cause I'd say like, you know, as a realtor or as a small business owner, predominantly people are going to be happy to see you. They're like, Oh, thanks for doing what you do. As a counselor who's sometimes well, is voting on your property tax increase, who's not doing that project you wanted or who's not filling that pothole. You're sort of in that gray area of like, am I going to get yelled at? But there was a moment like two weeks ago, and somebody sort of stopped me at a restaurant. And they're like, are you Michael Pratt? And I was like, I was like, yeah. And that was it. There's no follow-up. <laughs> Did he like, and I was like, I was like, stare you down or I was just, I kind of just extended my hand, shook his hand. And I was like, nice to meet you. And then we just kind of went our separate ways. So I'm, That's eerie. I'm still, still curious if I'm going to see that person again. Next thing you know, mm -hmm. you're going to be missing the batteries. He's in your talking row. about you on Reddit right now. <sighs> Probably Twitter. That's a Twitter thing. Or X. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. It's a, people mm. complain. I haven't called it X since it changed, though. Yeah. I always say Twitter, and then I say X, and then I'm like, you know, Twitter. Do yeah. people actually use it? Uh, I still it, do. It's, I use it for, like, <clears throat> Drive BC to check the Coke, yeah. but that's about it. Yeah. It's honest. It's become... Fire season. It's become entertaining yeah. more, th yeah, more than no. informative now. Mm. Um, but that's just, well, probably because of the neural link that's in my brain. I was that first person. Did you see that the other day? That the first person who had the Neuralink actually I chipped in their brain. Oh, well, yeah, I don't actually know either. I just saw it on X because you know that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. but uh -huh. apparently they 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 finally implanted the first chip chip in somebody's brain. Mm. And Elon Musk is just laughing because everybody's accusing like all the other billionaires of being the ones to microchip people, but Elon Musk is like actually doing it. I mean, so like from a science point of view, <laughs> like, and I don't chime in too much on this, but my fiance is obsessed. Um, I think it's not a bad thing if you need it, right? People have loss of limbs and, mm -hmm. you know, they need that connection right. to be rewired and that's a way to do it. I don't know how they do it, but I know that it's helping people. So is that enough to make this podcast under the educational category? Just that? Yeah. There? That's science. Yeah. We said science. Science. Yeah. No, it's definitely part of a, now it was a political one for sure. That's true. Yeah. So those hashtags are going to be weird now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, what what else do we got to talk about? They're um, kind of wrapping up here soon. Yeah. Anything you're working on or anything you got in the pipeline? Any uh, events? Are you polling yet for like the next election? Like, I'm not doing any polling yet. Um, I, you know, I was, it was a struggle enough to raise money as an independent for a campaign, let alone in between campaigns. And so you got our endorsement. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, she's not in Langley anymore by the end of the, by the oh, election. Yeah. Oh, okay. There isn't the election next year? 26. There's a, Different election next year, isn't there? 
Isn't the federal election yes. next year? Okay. <laughs> yeah, provincial one this year, federal one next year, probably, and then municipal the year after. Uh, so I uh, I know something. I didn't. I don't. I don't Should I announce my candidacy for a different? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. No, talk no, about no, how you're going to. That's why that MLA person wanted to see me. Uh, Woodward. No, <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, <laughs> I'm not. Um, if he's watching, he'll like that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he watches this. He definitely watched some clips on I thought you were going to convince him to come on here. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, things we're working on, or at least I'm working on, uh, and again, this might be popular, might not be, but I think Langley needs it. Uh, I think it's time we had a e-bike or micro mobility sharing program, like a lot of other municipalities do around the lower mainland. None of them South Fraser though. Uh, but I think it'd be really cool if we had, you know, shared e-bikes at the Langley event center in Fort Langley, at the Willoughby town center, maybe down in sort of downtown Langley up in uh <laughs> just where do you think those would end up <laughs> well the, the nice thing about the some of the, the amount of bikes i find in my back parking lot in downtown langley well the, the, they're not the, trackable the fun thing about they're not the microchips. yeah they're not microchip but the fun thing about some of the new companies especially the ones that are doing the e-bikes are that they self-destruct they self-destruct <laughs> but they're also obviously harder to maneuver mm-hmm. and then also for somebody who actually is paying to use them the companies can set it up so that you don't get your, your charge does not stop until you deposit it in a sort of mm. geocached area that actually allows you to drop it off. So, cause that, the last thing I want, especially when Langley's roads aren't even finished most of the time is to see a bunch of these things just ending up in a ditch somewhere because somebody gets to their destination and just throws Surprisingly, it. Surprisingly, Kelowna thing I, does pretty good though. Like well, and a lot you of just the, see it on the side of the yeah. road and okay. I guess cause that's, that's how just, it is in like San Diego and stuff. And yeah. I find that it's weird. There's just like these things dumped on the side of. Yeah. I'm not places. interested in that yet. I don't think Langley's there, but I think if, you know, especially during the summer months if somebody wanted to grab a bike from you know downtown willoughby and get out to fort langley for a morning or an afternoon i think that'd be awesome you could just mm-hmm. drop it off to these specific docking areas it's very safe It'd probably help like, with the parking i would help a lot oh, with yeah. the parking yeah. for those people who actually can't afford uh you know a brand new e-bike or an e-bike to themselves there's at least these ways so mm-hmm. sort of working on that working on things at the airport uh, for me, a big thing, and it's always been a big thing for me is the, the road design and making sure it's safe for people still working away at that. It's a long process, take little wins where we can get them, uh, working on making sure that we have a, we have a community forest management strategy in the township where we recognize that because we've developed so much and we are going to continue to develop a lot of our tree canopies sort of being taken down, especially in Willoughby. So trying to figure out how we can add to it in some areas, how we can protect it more as development happens. Um, but again, that's not easy. So a lot of things I, I'm looking forward to seeing more and more of our real community focused infrastructure actually come in. So community centers, neighborhood houses across the township, hoping we can get uh, some more art space because I think Langley does a really good job of supporting athletics. I think we can do a bit more supporting the arts community, performing arts, visual arts. So there's, uh, there's a lot of things we can do. There's only four years in a term, so only so much you can and so only so many hours in the day. But it's going to be an exciting 2024 and got a long way to go still. You think we can put a massive chandelier underneath the uh, Langley overpass? <sighs> well, I, I honestly, I would love to see because there's a lot of gray in Langley. I would love to see a township because I know the city has a bit of a mural festival or a mural program. I'd love to see the, the township have a bit of one as well sort of liven up some of the spaces. I know it's uh, it's not a municipal asset. I think the Port of Vancouver owns that Mufford Crescent overpass over the train tracks. If you can sort of picture that area and there's a big gray curved wall. Mm. Imagine putting a beautiful mural up on that. So Port of Vancouver, if you're listening, let us uh, put up a mural there. I think you just, just talk to the right people, you know, yeah. turn a blind eye and next thing you know, you'll have a nice mural of- Sounds uh, like politics. Probably Trudeau on there. <laughs> <laughs> Doing no. some stuff that he shouldn't yeah. be doing. A couple of people uh, waving some flags, honking as they drive by. Yeah. Sounds about yeah. right. Well, that's oh, a good way to end that. things. Uh, On that note. Yeah. But um, yeah. So anything, anything you want to add there? I'm good. No, great job. First, right. uh, yeah. first co-host event. Uh yeah. She was nervous. I'm like, why? You literally do this on your stories every single day. Just talk. I know. But then I just press send and then it's gone and then I never look at it again. Yeah, well, you, this, you have someone like that edits at, this and yeah. like perfects it. This. It was like pfft. vlogging Bro. is the weirdest thing in the world, isn't it? It's it's just the worst thing to do in public. I don't know if you ever do yours in public very oh, often or if you I'm not too much. I feel awkward. Yeah. You get used to it though. Mm-hmm. And that's where I'm like 
What if it I don't do a people message doing. and be like, are you sick? Are you in the hospital? So you do it when you're sick, though. And I do, I do because people will, like, if I don't do it, they, like, send messages asking if something's wrong because I haven't been on there. What's it like having that nice of a following? That's pretty great. <laughs> oh, but, like, you get a lot of mean people, too. You didn't carry this really obscure candle brand. But I have a lot of, like, offensive things in my store. Oh. Yeah, so I, I do got some hate from people about some of the things I carry. You know, so that's why I opened a store in like the Bible Belt because I just thought it'd be perfect. <laughs> Who's writing? Are they writing reviews? Like, hey, I came to your store and I'm, I'm appalled of. Uh... When my downtown Langley store was under renovation, I had like these posters put up on the windows said, don't F and peek. And I got reported to the city of Langley and I had to go meet a bylaw officer at my front. And I said that it meant fun because it said F star N. And I told him it meant fun. And he's like, Okay. I was like, but there's no proof that it meant what? the F word. But yeah, people report me for swear words yeah. and stuff on public. Whatever. It's hard to be a, a local influencer sometimes. <laughs> I can imagine. We all can be. relate on I this. can't relate I've, to I've being had, an I've, had some inter- I've had some interactions too, being on social media, like threats in my face, mainly because we were playing sports against them. Oh, I was going to say, is it because you were selling like a $3 million townhouse? No. Okay. No. No, like because people, you have the podcast? Both. Uh, the podcast and because I was p- posting stuff about real estate. But yeah, it's a funny story. I don't know if I'm going to talk about it right now. But, cause, uh, right. but yeah, Season three, times. episode one. Tune in 12 months from now and yeah, you get that story. From, exactly. From Dad, but if you're still watching, thank <laughs> you. Uh, that was the first episode of season two, 2024. Excited to bring you guys some more episodes and uh yeah we should uh let us know some feedback did we totally suck should we keep doing what we're doing or try something different i don't know we didn't even finish the food but thanks hard bean for sponsoring this uh we paid full price for those and uh if you have any questions make sure you reach out to one of us or comment down below if you haven't already subscribe because we make episodes like this every single week starting this week. (laughs) Uh, So yeah, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you for coming. (laughs) Cool. I don't know if you were